Hello there, everybody. My name is Georgie Newbury, and I am a flower farmer and florist based between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Wincanton here in sunny Somerset in southwest England. And today we're going to look at splitting perennials, uh, which is a fun and exciting, thrilling job. Somebody on the Instagram just described it as. Um, both violent and maternal at the same time, which I think is such a good description. Uh, so I'm going to make some little plants. Look at my little plants. Oh, yes, little plants. I like a little plant. I'm a bit of a weirdo, I know. Uh, but um, so what I have here um, is a great big, very congested old delphinium. One, two, three. And uh, she's been in the ground for several years and could really do with a freshen up. Plus, I really, really like the colour of her. There she is. Um, she's just having a little final fling. She's, most of the time she flowers, here, look at that colour, isn't that gorgeous? Mmm, sort of lilac, lilac-y. And someone else on Instagram called it, let's call it China Blue. So we're gonna call it China Blue. I do not know the name of this delphinium because I bought her, I think, at a village fate, a plant sale. And so she came with a label that said Delphinium. So at least I knew she was a Delphinium. Because <laughs> at Village Plant Sales, you're never quite sure. Having organised a few myself in my time, <laughs> I can tell you. It's an exciting time. Anyway, that's getting off the subject. Um, so sh this is time that this little, little lady is uh, split. And we'll make some more plants because I love the colour and I would like... Out of this one great big enormous plant, I'd like to make, you know, maybe 50. What do you think? Maybe. Um, so, per splitting perennials, questions I'm often asked. When? It's very simple. Early sp spring and early summer flowering perennials, you split in the autumn now. And normally, and the delphinium, mostly, she's having a late fling, but really she flowers in early summer. So I'm splitting her now. Whereas perennials which flower late summer and autumn, you split in the spring. So things like Japanese anemones and sedum and all of those things, um, you would split in the spring. I will admit it is not the end of the world if you split them whenever you like, when the mood takes you. Um, so I quite often will split quite a lot in the autumn because I'm doing a lot of rearranging my beds in the autumn. Um, whereas in the spring, the season sort of takes off and I don't really have time to think about it. I do a bit, but most of the rearranging of beds and so on here happens in the autumn. And so quite often I will do all the splitting of anything happens in the autumn. So how am I going to split this delphinium? Well, if I had her outside, I would dig her up. And sorry, I'm waving my knife around. I would dig her up, put her on the ground. I can't do this outside because you wouldn't be able to see. And uh, so I thought I'd do it in here because it's easier. It's a more controlled environment. Um, but I would dig her up, put her on the side, and I would literally take a sharp spade and chop into her and make lots of different plants. Um, that's quite a violent and exhausting way to do it. Um, and this way, I will get more plants because I'm taking my time, being a little bit more careful. Um, and the way I'm doing it is, I have a sharp knife. If I were outside doing it on the, on the ground, I'd do it with a, oh, mud everywhere. I'd do it with um, a sharp spade and it would be a much more kind of rough and ready process. Um, I would, first of all, I'm going to cut off the old tops because they're just getting in the way. And for once in my life, I actually have a, not only a pair of scissors, but a compost bucket. This is where you have to be really careful that you don't cut your fingers off in a fit of enthusiasm. So she's had a bit of a haircut. Now, I happen to know that there is a an ant's nest in this, <laughs> inside the ball of this delphinium. So I am going to put on a pair of gloves. 
one, I don't want to be eaten by the ants, but two, using a knife and not wearing gloves is foolish. I know this because I was trying to get the rust off this useful knife earlier and I cut my finger. So I'm getting gloves. Um, hold the line corner, I'm coming back. I'm just going to find them. There we are. One and a two. I'm coming back. So this way, if I cut my finger off, at least my finger will still be in my glove, I won't lose it. So, my useful knife, my chopped up plant. If I push you down a bit, then you'll be able to see what I'm doing more. <gasps> there you are. Now, I turn it round. Can you see where the, you see where the old congested plant is, the old shoots? And you can see relatively new shoots here. And what will amaze you, as it amazes me, even all these years on, be careful not to cut your finger off. So I'm holding the plant above the knife. And I'm just gonna saw. <laughs> Sorry, you fell over with all the effort. There we are, that's better. I'm just gonna saw through. Now, have we got anything? Oh my goodness, look at this. This is what you're looking for. Can you see a tiny bit of root? There, tiny bit of root and shoots. There, little shoots. That's next year's Delphinium plant. So I'm going to take a pot. From my national collection of plastic pots. I have enough plastic pots to last me a lifetime. So please don't at me about using plastic pots. I am using them until they all break. And then I will have some other kind of pot. But for the moment, my very large plastic pot collection is doing me nicely. So look, I've just popped that little crunch of root and those couple of little shoots into my pot and I'm going to put it with the others. There we are. Should we do another one? I'll do one more and then I'll talk some more. So I've got romantic lighting in here. Pulling away, pulling away the spare earth. Putting it straight in the compost. Here you go. This is real life lo-fi gardening. This is how it really happens. All these... Um, I love, I love very smart YouTube channels where everything's really <laughs> elegantly done. And mine is extreme lo-fi. So I'm just pulling off the spare earth around the edge because it's getting in the way. Ooh. There we are. Put that in there. And now I can see much more easily, I can see all the ants, but I can also see the inside of the plant. There. So all of this is the old root system of the plant. And I can cut up lots and lots of little babies. So let's have a little cut. You can pull if you prefer, you don't have to cut, but often it is the case that if a plant is quite congested like this, it's easier to just take a knife to it. Although, this is why gardeners are quite fit. <laughs> Sorry, I keep knocking you over. Here we go. So I've got my knife. I'm making sure my hand is out of the way. I'm making one hell of a mess. I'm taking away all the old earth. You can see why it's 
quite nice to just do this with a <laughs> with a spade. Oh, look. I love this. I love it. It's so exciting. Look. Here is a spring. Next spring, there's a shoot. There are little roots and buds. That's a nice little bit. So I'm going to tidy it up. Take off the old, take off the old, shake off the ants, which are crawling up my arm. Um, take off some of this old root. So I'm tidying it up, you see, making a smaller sort of arrangement. And then fill my pot with peat-free compost. If you're in the UK, I'm using Silver Grow. Obviously, we must use peat-free compost because otherwise, because peat bogs are huge sequesters of carbon. And for gardeners who are supposed to be green people, eco, concerned with the environment to be digging up enormous peat box so that which are finite is a terrible thing to do so there you are little plant it's that simple so i'm going to get on and do the rest of this but i think you've probably had enough <laughs> uh that's plenty but that is how you can take base these are called basil cuttings if i were had it this plant outside on the on the grass and I was just chopping it up with a spade um that's just called plain spit it, splitting the plant <laughs> um and you get you could you know this would make four or five nice sized plants but I want to make more I'm going to have lots and lots and lots of these and while they all shoot away and root nicely I'm going to put them in my cold frame um and if I have room, if I've arranged the beds before, before the cold weather comes, then I may plant these out before the winter. But the chances are I won't have bed space for them until the spring. But that's fine. They'll spend the winter in the cold frame. So long as the weather's relatively cool, I'll just let them be out in all weathers. If when relatively cool, in mild, you know, not outrageous weather if cold really cold weather comes in i'll cover them up with a bit of fleece or i might just pop them in the polytunnel for a day or two we we are in the southwest of england so we don't get horrible cold very very snowy winters here we get very mild relatively easy winters for which i'm grateful um so for those of you who may have harsher winters um perhaps pop them up and put them in a tunnel or a greenhouse until spring and then I will plant them out, having made a nice bed ready for them. Uh, I will plant them out in March, April time to flower next year. Anyway, thank you very much. Oh, I haven't edited, said any of the admin stuff. Right, if you enjoyed these uh, videos, please subscribe somewhere. There is a subscription button. Click the bell icon and we'll, be we'll tell you when we have a new clip out. Um, and if the tips and advice I give are useful, then please do buy me a coffee. The link for buying coffees is in my main bio of the whole channel. If you go back to the top of the channel, in the bio there, there's a link to buy me a coffee. Um, obviously not buy me a real coffee, <laughs> but uh, it's just a small contribution to uh, supporting making these videos, which I do enjoy doing. And it seems to me, to my astonishment rather, that you guys like watching them too. So we're all happy. Happy days. Thanks for watching. And here's to next year. Oh, look at that. Violent mothering. <laughs> I'll see you. Not really. It's just making new plants. Anyway, have a lovely evening, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye.